This presentation today is about psychoactive drugs. And when we talk about drugs, they aren't always illegal drugs. Sometimes we are talking about legal drugs and how they can act and serve uh, to uh, be antagonists or agonists within our nervous system. Psychoactive drugs in general are substances that either serve, again, to either um, emulate or be just like a neurotransmitter, an agonist, or block its reuptake or they can be antagonists, drugs that actually block the actions of a neurotransmitter. But all of these psychoactive drugs will change our consciousness, our moods, our thoughts, and our behaviors. They include those legal drugs like tobacco and alcohol, as well as illicit or illegal drugs, such as in some states, cannabis, amphetamines, ecstasy, and cocaine. There's no talking about drugs unless we talk first about addiction. An addiction is a condition in which the body actually requires that drug in order to function properly, in order to behave properly. People who have addictions are often addicted to a drug because they become tolerant and dependent on it. Tolerance is simply the need of an increasing dose of any drug before you can actually start to feel the effects of it. And there are people who may just start off having one cigarette every week or so and then eventually they need two cigarettes to get that feeling of well-being or release of stress same thing could go with alcohol so tolerance is really um, for many drugs like sedatives and opiates people not only develop a tolerance for them but become addicted to them as a result of it when people do become addicted to drugs and they try to wean themselves or take themselves off the drug they may actually experience something called withdrawal and withdrawal is both um, is a discomfort. It's a distress that comes when a person stops using that addictive drug. And while withdrawal can be painful and uncomfortable, the only drug that you can die from withdrawal symptoms is alcohol. It can cause people to have strokes. So people who are trying to withdraw from alcohol are often sent to centers where they can get some kind of a drug that weans them off alcohol slowly. And so it doesn't put their body into a shock. When we talk about dependency, we're talking about both physiological and psychological dependencies. And a physiological dependency is a biological addiction. And that is when you still need the drug in order per, to prevent those system, uh, symptoms of withdrawal. Whereas psychological addiction is when you need that drug to maintain a sense of well being, when you need to get a relief from some kind of a negative emotion you have. So these are two different things. And while your body can actually, um, recover from a physiological addiction relatively quickly, often it's the psychological addiction which keeps somebody coming back to the drug. We're going to talk about the different classes of drugs and we're going to start with depressants. And depressants, just like their name would uh, mean, are drugs that calm down and they calm down our neural activity, our nervous system, they slow our body's functions, they slow everything from our thought processes to our, to our motor functions. And the most common drugs are alcohol, barbiturates, benzodiazepines such as um, Xanax, which is a common anti-anxiety medication, opioids, opiates such as heroin and morphine and Oxycontin. And these drugs work different. Each of them works a little differently. But in general, we see that alcohol and barbiturates are GABA agonists. In other words, they mimic the neurotransmitter GABA. And if you remember, GABA is one of our body's main inhibitory neurotransmitters. It slows our body down. Oh, of course, alcohol slows our body down. Now, opiates, which are also depressants, or we classify them as depressants, are not, they, they also slow the body down. So they do work on the GABA um, neurotransmitter system, but they're also endorphin agonists. So they actually mimic the neurotransmitter and endorphin. And if you remember, endorphins are our body's natural painkillers. And what makes depressants so addictive and, and you know, so hard to recover from is that our body will stop producing endorphins when opiates are introduced. So your body's natural painkillers just stop getting produced when it sees that there's a synthetic painkiller out there, which means when somebody tries to come off an opiate addiction, they actually are in pain and it leads them back to using the drug again. Okay, so we're now gonna move on to stimulants. 
Stimulants, unlike depressants, stimulate or they excite neural activity, they speed up our body's functions. They speed up all sorts of functions, both our, our cognitive functions as, as well as our motor functions, which isn't always good. If you're thinking too fast or moving too fast, you can sometimes make mistakes. Stimulants actually activate our sympathetic nervous system, so it can cause a dilation of the pupils, a drop in your appetite, a rise in your blood sugar levels. Think of all the things that our sympathetic nervous system does to prepare our body for fight or flight. Some of the common drugs are methamphetamines, amphetamines that are prescribed for ADHD symptoms like Ritalin and Adderall, uh, ecstasy, which is not prescribed for ADHD symptoms, Cocaine, nicotine, and caffeine are all common stimulants, and they all affect norepinephrine. In other words, they mimic norepinephrine. They are norepinephrine agonists. We're going to move on to the next class of drugs, which are hallucinogens. And we can argue about what is a hallucinogen. Is marijuana really one? But the bottom line is that um, hallucinations, which are the, the hallmark of hallucinogens are false sensory experiences. They don't have to be necessarily like I see somebody walking in or I hear voices, but they're false sensory experiences that occur in the absence of any appropriate sensory stimulation. They distort our perceptions of the world and they are also called psychedelics. So marijuana, LSD, PCP, uh, mescaline, which is peyote, uh, psilocybin, which are mushrooms, not regular mushrooms that your parents feed you, but shrooms. Um, these all affect the neurotransmitter system of dopamine. They are dopamine agonists. So they actually serve to mimic the effects of dopamine in the brain. Okay, that is it for psychoactive drugs. And you're going to actually be asked to um, watch a video on it, a real quick video which will actually talk about how when we classify drugs, it's not really as easy as I've made it out to be. Um, and you're gonna get a little bit more information about each drug and it is a participation activity. So you're highly encouraged to participate to earn those points for this unit.